Right foot, now left foot. Hey. 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 One hand, one hand, one hand. Two hands, two hands, two hands. Did When you think about space, sometimes you think about stuffy rocket scientists or astronauts. But this lady is changing the face of space and especially bringing along her adorable daughter. Please welcome Kelly Girardi. You know her on TikTok, of course. Hi, Kelly. Thank you so much for having me. Well, of, of course, I think that women in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, one of the most undervalued things out there right now, there just isn't enough women in that field, but you live it every day. So what has your experience been? Yeah, absolutely. So this field wasn't an obvious choice for me or an obvious fit when I started. One of my deepest, darkest secrets is that I have a film degree. So I have a non-engineering background. And so to think of breaking into a high tech industry like aerospace was daunting, but I found a lot of unique ways to leverage my creative background. I had roles in media and policy and communications and operations, business development. It's been a wild ride. And then more recently, over the past five years, I have also developed uh, this separate track to space myself as a researcher. And so I am creating my own path to eventually fly to space. And in the meantime, I'm testing a lot of technology and conducting research in microgravity. So I go on a normal type of aircraft, except it takes this roller coaster profile that does these big parabolas. And on the downturn, that's when you experience weightlessness. And that's where I get to test spacesuits like you see back there and test uh, NASA supported research and do experiments. So I was going to mention the cardboard cutout of yourself. That's, yeah. girl, that's a flex, like you said. <laughs> it is a little bit of an odd flex. So the cardboard cutout was actually a, a leftover and a casualty of a canceled book tour when COVID happened. So my memoir came out in uh, November of last year and it's called Not Necessarily Rocket Science, A Beginner's Guide to Life in the Space Age. And now I have an army of cardboard Kellys following me all over my house. Well, I want to talk about the book because yeah. I think the book is another really good entrance point, especially for young girls who, you know, like I said at the beginning, STEM fields aren't necessarily pushed to girls. Why did you think it was so important? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's hard to see yourself in a field where you are not used to seeing yourself reflected, people that look like you, you know, and I think one of those things is an exposure issue for sure early on, but another one can also be an experience issue. And so I've certainly in the beginning of my career experienced a lot of situations in which I was the only woman in the room or at the meeting or on the panel, right? And I think we've gone a long way towards course correcting and being more inclusive of an industry. There's still a long way to go, there always is. But I have been encouraged to see that leaders and peers are holding this as a priority, diversity, equity, inclusion, and making those sort of first order priorities in every industry. And I think it only makes us stronger. Yeah, um, I, I also wonder personally for you, when you go into those space meetings, when you go into those science meetings like that, I mean, you have beautiful, long, dark hair, you have a nose ring, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't fit the mold, I would think, in the eyes of kind of the traditional rocket science. So for you personally, when you walk into those meetings, how do people treat you? How do they receive you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a good question. I think my answer has changed over the years. I think early on, I really proactively minimized, you know, those parts of my personality and I was less expressive. You know, I really love fashion. I love makeup. I love beauty, right? I, those were things I intentionally toned down in an effort to be taken more seriously early on. Now I could kick myself looking back, right? I've learned to embrace my multitudes. I actually think that that helps me provide unique value in areas where I'm coming from a different perspective, from a different mindset, approaching a problem in a novel way, right? We, we need that level of, you know, diverse background and people and thoughts and solutions for tomorrow's problems. And so I think my answer has changed over time. Now, when I walk into a room or when I walk into these environments, I'm operating with a level of confidence that has been 
and built and earned over time. And I, I hope that, you know, for future women who, who set out to, you know, be a part of these incredibly exhilarating industries, that we can just skip across those first couple of years of feeling insecure because I do see more representation in the fields today. I think you're beautiful and so sweet. However, your daughter, Delta V, I feel like I know this child. She is the sassiest, cutest, smartest little thing I have ever seen. Uh, tell me about your decision to put her out there and talk about space through the eyes of that age. Absolutely. So Delta is, is sleeping right now. My tiny little counterpart taking a nap. She's three years old. Um, she's absolutely sassy. She's she's a little ham. And today's episode, we're talking about girls in space. How many girls in None. God, this is important. And so I think it was it was less of a conscious decision on my part and more of a Delta is a natural content creator. And, you know, I, I say that just full of love and admiration for her because she naturally wants to communicate. I think COVID has actually in some ways this past year of her life having no other social interaction with you know peers it's given her a lot of like hey fellow kids energy <laughs> like she's just a little bit too used to adult interaction that I, I worry what happens when she gets in a preschool class of her own but it's been also a wonderful experience for her and I to get to be closer together I'm working from home she's literally in my office space all day long. And so naturally those conversations about space and science and everything that's going on that I'm participating in, she's been an active witness to. And so organically it's really come together in a fun way where together we're able to learn. And I love her just, you know, fresh and raw reactions to some of the things that have captivated my imagination. Uh, I mean, when, when, like I said, you did that series about perseverance on Mars and Delta, her excitement made me tear up. It was the cutest thing I have ever seen. Yeah, it was really special. And, you know, the fact that she had that positive re-encouragement from NASA, right? We tweeted out and NASA responded. And then the Perseverance rover itself responded and told Delta about the rocks that it was going to research. And so it really has created this little world and, and just this sense of awe in Delta that I couldn't be more grateful for. Not only do you have your book, but speaking of Delta, how exciting you have a new kids book series. Tell yeah. me about it. This has been a long time coming for me. It's a dream of mine. I really just am most enthusiastic and energized by interacting with kids and sharing my love of space with a younger generation. And so on the heels of my memoir, which is more, you know, young adult, early career, kind of adult focused, I am so thrilled. I'm coming out with a children's picture book series at the end of 2021. First title will be released in December. The series is called Luna Muna, and it features a, a character heavily inspired by Delta, which many folks will recognize similarities when the cover art is revealed. But Luna Muna is a little girl who loves all things space and intends to be an astronaut when she grows up. And she has a very special magic helmet that allows her to float like an astronaut when she wears it. And so I'm so excited to introduce this character to the world. I'm gonna end with a couple of quick questions. Do you think we're gonna get to Mars in our lifetime, me and you? I think so. I think it depends on the degree of which we aim to stay there. Are we going to establish a settlement in our lifetime where we have full-time permanent presence on Mars? I think it's ambitious. It's more of an economic challenge than an engineering challenge at this point. So my answer would be a hedge and it would be yes to boots on Mars in our lifetime. Will it be more than flags and footprints? That's up to the public and to budgets to decide how much we want to invest in that. What do you think about Delta's lifetime? I hope so. I'm really, really passionate about sharing the importance and the critical nature of expanding our footprint in the solar system in a sustainable way designed to stay, not just to go look and come back. We need to develop the ability to manufacture in space, to live in space, to, to expand Earth's economic sphere. And so I think these are all things I expect in the next generation to see come to fruition. If you're going to Mars for a pure vanity, from a pure vanity standpoint, so what's the one earthly thing you're bringing with you? My Kindle. I would find a way to, to load extra, extra, as many hard drives as I could possibly pack. And I would want to have enough reading material and other entertainment value. 
What would you like Delta to do when she grows up? Anything she wants. You know, we joke all the time. She, every day, it's something different. You know, she appreciates space. She's not sure if she wants to be an astronaut. If she does want to be an astronaut, maybe it's more of a space veterinarian or a teacher in space. And so we'll see. Okay. And a commercial flight to space, is that happening in our lifetime? Absolutely. It's already happening. And so I fully expect for me, space flight is when and not an if. I fully expect that in the next few years, I will travel to space myself suborbitally on a commercial vehicle. And um, yeah, this is the beginning of the next era of space exploration. It's democratizing access to space, expanding opportunities for flights beyond government astronauts to civilians like you and me, and to researchers, academics, students, and everyone in between. Well, Kelly, it has been a total pleasure to talk to you. Congratulations on both of the books. We will link them here on Beyond TV. And please tell Delta I said hello and that she is probably my favorite creator on TikTok. <laughs> I will. Thank you, Lisa, for having me. I appreciate it. And I will give Delta a big hug. Please do.